Our next speaker, he walks the path. Christian Rutishauer. Christian, he's truly a Christian. He's a Jesuit priest. He led a pilgrimage to Jerusalem from Zug. They walked all the way from Zug to Jerusalem. In a very interesting story, he's got a long CV of spiritual leadership. He's uh, worked with the Vatican on Jewish relations. He's the program director at La Salle House in Bad Schönbrunn. Walk the path, Christian Rutisauer. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening to everybody. Uh, I will not give you a sermon this night, and I won't evangelize. You will not get a lullaby, but I just want to share uh, this idea of walk the path on foot to Jerusalem. It was two decades ago that I already had this vision because I realized the central meaning of Jerusalem. Of course, everybody of you New York knows that uh, Jerusalem is holy for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. But I also realized that for a lot of secular people, Jerusalem doesn't leave cold. And then I was observing the pilgrimage booming here in Europe. Catholics, they are oriented to Rome. And a lot of people are walking on the Camino to Santiago in order to make a spiritual experience on the one hand, or just for adventure, or for yeah, the growth of the faith. And I said, why shouldn't we redirect the pilgrimage to, from Santiago to Jerusalem? Rome is too confessional. Santiago is too European. But Jerusalem, that's global. And we are living in a globalized world. And I think this globalized world needs really a holy place, a center of value, a center of orientation. But of course, if you are looking at Jerusalem, you see that's not a point of re uh, orientation, but a city that needs reconciliation, justice, and peace. You have two nations, you have three religions struggling there, a city of international importance. Why is Jerusalem always the problem of politics or so of social life? It could be the key of the solution. We could learn there how to foster peace and justice. And so I began to link, on the one hand, a spiritual search with a political and social commitment, and then, of course, the vision was born. On foot to Jerusalem, a spiritual, interreligious, and political uh, journey. The walk, 4,000... 400 kilometers. Of course, we had to plan it. In what season are we starting? We, for us, it was clear, if I speak for us, four people, that we are going through the Balkan, then to Istanbul, through Turkey, and of course, when you're going on foot to Jerusalem, you have to cross Syria. So, that was the idea, and we began to realize this uh, project. We organized here at the La Salle House in the canton of Souk uh, several seminars just to prepare our pilgrimage and to unfold the different uh, dimension of this project. So, what does it mean, spiritual growth by, um, uh, by a pilgrimage? What does it mean, interreligious dialogue, Muslim, Christians, and Jews? My vision was just to walk together with Muslims Muslims and Jews, but it wasn't possible. I couldn't find uh, the fellow pilgrims, and so finally we have been four Christians who walked. And then, of course, it was... Uh, you see, if you are walking with a Jew, you have to take kosher food. You have to rest on Sabbath. It's much too complicated. So we were just four Christians uh, that we walked to, uh, to Jerusalem. So we have had these uh, preparatory uh, seminars, of course, and then we have had two exhibitions. One exhibition on pilgrimage in late antiquity, so just to have the history, and another art exhibition, Gravitation Point, uh, Jerusalem. And then we started just one year ago. It was on June the 2nd, the Ascension Day. That was the opening ceremony at the La Salle House. 
And you could see at the end of the ceremony, a lot of people joined us. Uh, we got a blessing. We four pilgrims, two women, two men. Uh, Tobias Karo, my colleague, who is also here, gave us the blessing this evening. You see the Buddhist monk and the nun there. So people from other denominations, they also uh, joined us. And then we started just to walk with others, and they followed. So the first day, 150 people just walked with us uh, to Einsiedeln, and then another group uh, joined us for 10 days uh, up to the border of Switzerland, and then we four, we continued. First through northern Italy, uh, through Austria, uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia. Backpack, 14 to 16 kilogram, Daily route, 25 to 30 kilometers. Temperature in summer, 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. You can imagine blisters, sweat, pain. So that was our daily life in the beginning. But with the time, we just found um, uh, our rhythm. You can see, we walked in the fields. We walked on roads and streets. We walked on highways, days and days here, just uh, 10 days before we reached uh, Istanbul. Then here in the city of Istanbul, very often it was just uh, in the middle of, uh, of the traffic and, uh, and a traffic jam. And that's a result. <laughs> so when you are walking, you have just to smile. Just take a smile when the pain comes. But that's not all. It was not only adventure, uh, but it was really a spiritual process. Because we walked every day, one or two hour, hours just in silence. We had a short time of prayer. You see here the cup, bread, the ribbon with our prayers, an icon. And so we reflected our life during this time. It was like a sort of personal development and looking back into our biography just to come into this process of spiritual growth. And then, of course, every evening we had to look for accommodation. 220 days we have been on the road. Every afternoon we arrived in a village. Very often there was no pension, no hotel. We had just to knock four persons. Can we sleep in your house? Would you open the door for us? So we need a shower, of course. And so the hospitality it was really compelling. People were so friendly. They invited us for dinner. Uh, we had long talks. But of course, very often, there have been conversation much more from heart to heart than in words. Because we walked through 11 countries with nine different languages. So very often we just couldn't communicate, so you had just to give a smile and to explain with your hands uh, how you, um, uh, what you want and uh, how you can get what you need as a pilgrim. But of course, we crossed the countries of ex-Yugoslavia. Two decades ago, there was war on the Balkan, and many of the former asylum seekers are now working here in Switzerland. And we said we want just to contact the people on the Balkan and to listen to their experience of war. About We want to learn about the life in the aftermath uh, of the war, the family fates. Of course, we heard a lot of difficult political, economical and social situation on the migration problem. And when you are a pilgrim, you have just a certain sensitivity and a certain empathy to all people who have to leave their home. So these are the physical and outward marks on the Balkan. Here you have the water supplier of Vukovar. Of course, these people, for example, in Serbia, they are still in depression. And we couldn't help us and solve the problems as pilgrims. But what we can do, we could lend our ears, you could show our sympathy, you could talk to the people, and I think that was the service uh, we could uh, do to these people uh, on the road. But in addition, you have to know, uh, on the Balkan, you have these wonderful buildings of the Belle Epoque. 
There is the great synagogue, for example, in Sofia. And all these buildings, they show us too that uh, there is a really rich history of the Balkan and not only the recent history of the communist uh, era. This was really a development that Europe extended once to the east and to the Bosporus. We arrived there in Istanbul after a summer long walking here um, you see the, the capital of trade, of culture, uh, of religion on the left-hand side. It's the Blue Mosque on the right-hand side, the Hagia Sophia, the bulk carrier in front of us. It was really a time of rest for us. We were two weeks in Istanbul, and of course here the Hagia Sophia, once the imperial church, Later on, it was transformed into a mosque. Nowadays, it's, nowadays it's a, a museum. So you could just study the overlapping of the different cultures and of the different religions. And that was also the reason why we organized seminars and encounters um, with Muslims in Istanbul. Here, this was a seminar, just a one-day seminar, with the the Tullah Gülen network. That's the Islamistic movement that backs the current government of Erdogan in Turkey. So we try to speak to them and just to see how can we, out of a spirit of the pilgrimage, contribute to mutual understanding and to um, a coexistence. So this was a very fruitful time um, in Istanbul. And of course, we wanted to reach as many people as possible. That's the reason every, every evening we try to connect to the block and they wrote our block. At the end, we could realize that 350,000 persons uh, clicked on the block in these seven months. And of course, uh, the medias, they were with us. Here they are just producing a movie for uh, Swiss TV and we just... Uh, um, uh, produce now a, a DVD uh, on, the, on the whole pilgrimage. But that was just the first part of our pilgrimage uh, to Jerusalem. A short boat ride brought us to the uh, eastern, uh, to the Asian um, uh, shore of the Marmara Sea. And when we walked there, we said, we are walking on solid ground. But finally, it's a walk afloat. We really have to trust. We really need the guidance. So, and then, like Moses, one left e once left Egypt with the Israelite to go through the Dead Sea, through the desert. I just said, we left Western culture. We go now, now through the desert, and we have, of course, uh, to face the challenges. And the desert for us, of course, was Syria. But first, we were in Anatolia. It was a wonderful weather, gorgeous landscape, uh, mild uh, in autumn, and it was just great. The people very friendly and helpful. And of course, we could observe a society where you have a struggle of the secular order on the one hand and the comeback of Islam and of religion in the public sphere on the other hand. That's really a fight now uh, within Turkey. And then, of course, this was also the root of the Crusades of past. They were pilgrims with weapon, we without weapon, and we were really vulnerable. Yes, we were vulnerable. We had to decide, shall we cross Syria in this political situation of the uprising? Would we expose ourselves too much? Can we get reliable information on the situation in the country? Is it really a civil war? What will happen? So it was really while walking in Turkey, a process of discernment, of discussion, of research. And finally we said, we decided, yes, we go. We shut down the block, we informed all the block community, of course, and then you had, we had to organize ourselves. We had to organize cash, credit card, they don't work anymore in Syria. Then, of course, we had to organize paper maps. Up to this point, we had done everything by GPS. And then uh, we also um, uh, organized alternative communication channels and um, uh, had to manage um, worst-case scenarios. 
And then we cross the border, and that border we pretended to do a, trekki a trekking to Amman, like stupid tourists, <laughs> to do a trekking in a war country, because it's illegal to go to Israel, because Syria is still the uh, enemy uh, of the state of Israel. And then we have had, in the mountains of Latakia, first very quiet days, but when we came to the region of Hama and Homs, of course, we were in a society at the edge of collapse uh, and of anarchism. So the secret service was with us um, 24 hours, just in a distance of about 100 to 200 kilometers. They interrupted any conversation uh, we had, and so it was really a very uh, insecure situation. And one morning, a man stood um, on the road in front of me, and he threatened me by his gun. So, the Secret Service was in place, they began to protect us, but they told us also, you are going to Jerusalem. And of course, we knew that it's illegal to, to go to Jerusalem. So the Secret Service and the army on the one hand was a protection for us, on the other hand, it was just uh, a threat for us too. It was very instable, we had to trust, uh, we had to go through, and uh, finally we managed it. There are many uh, Christian monasteries uh, in Syria. Uh, they gave us shelter and, um, and hospitality. And so uh, we walked through this country. Of course, you know, it's not allowed to take any pictures. That's the reason why I have only a few of them. But Assad, he's everywhere. The Christian community begs, of course, Assad, because uh, Assad comes from a minority. The uprising, these are the Sunnites, the Muslims. The Christians are afraid uh, of a Muslim state. And then Homs and Hama, it's just, uh, it's just civil war. And you have just to, to see how you uh, get through it. And then here in the Christian monasteries, we have had uh, the possibility of a day of rest. Uh, we could get information from the first hand, and it was really uh, a very great help um, uh, they, uh, they gave us. And when we arrived, finally, uh, in, uh, in Damascus, after about two and a half weeks uh, of walk, we decided to take the last uh, route to the border um, uh, by taxi, uh, because uh, the situation was so confusing and so dangerous, and uh, our nerves were really blank, and that's the reason why we, we just took then the taxi. That's the only uh, 80 kilometers uh, we, were, we went by car. And then uh, in Jordan, it was just like freedom. It was just like in, in a new culture. And uh, we walked there, of course. It was uh, already the land of the Bible. We went to Madaba. You have there the mosaic floor on, with the pilgrim uh, map of the 6th century. And I just could laugh because I said, you have this stone map and we are here with the GPS. What development from the stone map to the GPS and the different means pilgrims have. Uh, just to go uh, to Jerusalem, and then of course to the Mount of Nebo, where Moses looked to the Promised Land, and uh, he died there. <laughs> we were secure and could uh, walk on here to the Jordan River, and then we entered, of course, the uh, Jericho, but without battle, of course, and then we went up to uh, the uh, desert of uh, Judea uh, to Jerusalem. But of course, the first thing when you arrive in Jerusalem, that's not a city of peace, but there too, you have the signs of the conflict. Here, the wall, we have to cross it, and then Jerusalem. We arrived on a Friday evening. It was just peace and silence that spread all over the city. Here, the view uh, from the Mount of the Olives on the old and the new city. It was just the hour of the great emotions. And of, and of course, I didn't know, did I walk to the earthly Jerusalem and to the heaven, or to the heavenly one? I thought um, I was just um, going on and walking uh, to both uh, cities. And Christians, uh, as we were, we went uh, first to the Holy Sepulchre, and the day after, uh, we went to Bethlehem. We want to spend there uh, Christmas, but we didn't go to the official uh, church in Bethlehem to the service, uh, but we went to the Caritas Baby Hospital. We uh, could spend the night there just to so show our solidarity uh, with the babies and the Palestinian uh, people who is living under uh, occupation. And then we went back to the city and we organized a Pilgrim's Peace Conference. We invited uh, uh, famous people who can uh, 
uh, organize pilgrimages. Here, for example, the Custos of the Holy Land, the Franciscan is responsible for the Christian holy places. Then uh, Rabinovich, that's the rabbi of the Western Wall, they talked never together. It's the first time that they sit at the same table. table. And we invited also the Mufti of the Temple Mount. And then we discussed how can we organize holy places so that the pilgrims not only strengthen their faith, but that they are also open for dialogue and for believers of other traditions. And how can pilgrimage and the spirit of pilgrimage be a mean for dialogue and justice and peace and to foster uh, coexistence uh, and tolerance? This guy is from the United States, Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf. He is the Imam of Ground Zero. He is working in Manhattan for the Christian Muslim dialogue, and he also discovered pilgrimage as a mean for interreligious dialogue. And that's the reason why uh, we invited him. After this uh, conference, we took some days on the short on the on the sea on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. It was just quiet there, and then we came back uh, last January uh, here to Switzerland. And since when, then we are just writing books, uh, we are producing our, uh, our DVD. We don't uh, walk anymore, we four, but we talk to people, to hundreds and, uh, and thousands of them. Uh, already uh, every week somebody uh, of us is now talking about uh, our project and we just organized on Pentecost uh, a symposium for pilgrims just to network so that as many people as possible are inspired by this idea to walk to Jerusalem uh, for peace. And uh, this night I talk to you. Thanks for your attention.